All right, hello and welcome everyone. So today we got the update 25.6 augment reworks and tweaks. So with that, I figured what would be nice is to just go through every single one of the augments that were changed in order that they appear on the notes and go over kind of whether they're worth it, whether the buffs helped them and stuff like that. Um, we're not going to be showing every single augment change because some of them are honestly pretty meaningless but we are going to go over some of them starting with valkyr valkyr has her hysteria augment changed so we have this very very simple build put together here with hysterical assault which is the augment that was changed you can aim and then attack to leap onto the enemies up to 50 meters away so the range for this augment was increased and the invulnerability that you get during your four now lingers because you have to aim for this. And previously, that would not take you out of your melee weapon, but it does now. So you have a small window of invulnerability whenever you ADS while you have this equipped so that you have the chance to still be invulnerable and get the leap towards your enemies. Does this make hysterical assault good? No, but... The reason for that is not necessarily a problem with Hysterical Assault. It's just kind of that Valkyr is not particularly good right now. Um, as it stands currently, Valkyr is kind of just an Eternal War bot, where this is the only thing that's really worthwhile. Hysterical Assault is a good bit of fun, and I am going to show it off for anyone who has forgotten how this works. Um, but it's, it's really not really useful. It's just kind of a cool thing you can do. So with that, let's just uh, show this like level 80 thing real quick. Probably won't do like the entire test, but you go into your four, ADS, hit E, and you jump in. Basically, you're invulnerable for a small window of time uh, whenever you aim for these jumps so you don't lose your invulnerability right away. So you're, you're never in danger while you're doing this because you retain your complete invulnerability. But yeah, it's pretty... Pretty normal Valkyr things. Otherwise, nothing has significantly changed for Valkyr. Uh, even though things probably do need to at some point or another to kind of make her more relevant once again. But yeah, that's the Valkyr augment for anyone who's forgotten. The changes don't really do a whole lot, but in fairness, Valkyr needs more than an augment to be viable. Moving on, we have Ash. Ash got a change to his Bladestorm augment, and this one is pretty good, honestly. Um, they changed Rising Storm so that now... All the attacks from your clones will build combo, and let me tell you, they fucking build it fast. And this also has a new passive benefit where you get plus 10 second combo duration um, just from this, which basically means you can forego things like drifting contact on your melee weapons that you're using on Ash, which is nice. Um, so if you wanted to build a lot of combo really quickly, this does that, and this augment is pretty good for it like if you're going to be like excessively using melee on ash and you just want to get that combo counter like hilariously high this is definitely an augment to choose um and you still get to do like all like the normal ash good stuff like using your two and all that good business so let's show this real quick for anyone that has forgotten how this works we'll just dump these guys in here real quick Use our two to go invisible, hit four, mark these guys, and then I will pull out my melee weapon so you can see how fast the combo builds. It is pretty quick. Granted, I'm using the Venka Prime, so I have the enhanced combo counter. Um, but like that is that's a lot of combo to to build as quickly as I am. Like it, it's it's no joke. That's a that's a lot of damage that you're getting from your combo just because you're using your four pretty regularly. Um, so you can take out, like, large groups while your clones build hella combo instantly. Uh, so yeah, really solid. Can't really complain too much there. Uh, pretty reasonable as an augment, I think. Moving on. All right, for Atlas. Atlas has received an update to his Titanic Rumbler augment, and I'll be completely and totally honest with you. Uh, it's really useless. The, the Rumblers are going to be uh, pretty difficult to uh, have... A completely autonomous thing that is good so it's it's pretty rough basically what has happened is that the titanic rumbler has had its damage and speed increased which sure i guess uh and if you hit the power again it will activate its taunt and have the knockdown effect as you can read here the taunt is not listed on the mod but that will probably maybe change at some point uh but basically you can reactivate to get the ability and it has another benefit now 
So I am going to show this. Uh, I'm just going to turn invincibility on so you can see what the Rumbler does. And this is with some pretty significant uh, strength for an Atlas build, I think. So this is me hitting four again. It's the knockdown and the taunt, so all the enemies will fight him. So there's that. And you can, you can keep hitting four, and it'll spam the knockdown. Obviously, these corrupted ancients are... Uh, here, we'll, there you go. They're, they're, they're gone now, so... Titanic Rumbler can can really, really get to work now. Man, what a... What a, what a... what a good ability that's definitely been improved by this augment, boys and girls. Definitely. De de definitely a good thing. Abs absolutely not. Augment, still bad, uh, mostly because Rumbler's bad, though. In fairness. Like, to be totally fair, it's because... The ability is bad, not because the augment is bad necessarily. So there's that. Moving on. All right, moving on to Oberon's, or one of his updated augments. We are going to be doing these as they appear. Of course, this is his Hollowed Eruption augment. Uh, this basically makes it so that you can reactivate Hollowed Ground to like get all the damage out of it all at once. Uh, and also, the new passive on this is to double the duration of Hollowed Ground. Which, sure, I guess. So, let's see how this works. I have just thrown this onto my Eidolon build, which has over 200% power strength. And, and we'll, we'll see how this goes. I'm going to leave Oberon's invulnerability on once again. And we will kill these Ancients real quick. So you can, you can explode it. And it's, like, not awful. But, like, is this an effective way to deal damage? Not, not really. Like, it's not, it's not the Titanic Rumbler, but, like, not, not the way I would go about doing, doing my damages. Like, it'll kill fodder enemies, but granted, this is also with 200% power strength, and, like, there's just, we, we'll get to what you could be doing instead with Oberon uh, pretty soon here, but this ain't it, Chief, is pretty much what the conclusion comes to. All right, for Excalibur, this is actually more of just a quick note. Furious Javelin, uh, this made it so they, they increased the duration and the damage of the buff. Um, Furious Javelin sucks. You should use Chromatic Blade instead. Like, there's like I don't even need to show this. I would hope this augment is just terrible. It doesn't actually really matter how much they increase um, the duration or the damage buff by, because Excal already does way more than enough damage if you are only using Chromatic Blade. Uh, there will never be a need to use Furious Javelin or, or his three ability, really, in any case. So, yeah, that's all for Excal. Uh, in a similar vein for Hydroid, uh, Title Impunity uh, clear status effects and grants 12 seconds of proc immunity for yourself and allies that come in contact with it. Uh, the duration of the immunity buff was increased, but this augment is simply not useful. Uh, cleaning statuses is just not a valued thing right now, uh, and there are a lot of Warframes that are simply immune to status uh, with a variety of their abilities, and they also have other benefits. So... Not going to be a useful thing if they just increase the duration of this. Uh, it'll be pretty much exactly the same as it was before. The duration doesn't do anything for it. Moving on. Okay, for Mag, on the other hand, Mag has an update to her Magnetized Discharge Augment. And this is pretty simple, all things considered. And that's that it gets a passive benefit now that increases the range of the ability by 45% in addition to the Disarming Enemies thing. Disarming Enemies thing? Never been useful. However, you do want range on this ability for Mag. It is like the main downside of this ability is that it's not quite large enough uh, for it to be like a thing that you really want. Like you were always using Stretch and Augur Reach and Cunning Drift because we need that range, but we can't dump our strength for overextended. Uh, so this actually helps this ability pretty significantly, and we're just going to show that off real quick like... Uh, it's also worth noting, I'm going to take the Ancients out of this, because obviously we always kill Ancients first. I don't think that is uh, a thing people need me to like show every single time. So now you can see the bubble is considerably larger. Like, th this is considerably bigger, uh, and it is very effective. Like, th this is... It, it's just much better... Like, 
just adding a little bit more range actually really does matter. Like, like the augment literally just being another range mod, it's actually pretty good. Like, if you're using a build that is focusing, like, completely on her too, which is usually how it goes for mag, um, and you can make room or you don't care about counter pulse, I personally prefer counter pulse. Um, but, like, I would, I would like to use both, honestly. Like, it, it's a consideration personally to completely drop intensify from like this little build uh and use counter pulse and magnetize discharge, discharge together just because the 45 percent range actually does matter on this build um but yeah a very good change to this augment i am sure it will like see a good bit of use just because it's just another copy of stretch like it's literally just your second copy of stretch and that's a lot of warframes would love to have that uh so yeah moving on Okay, as for Mesa, Mesa's a 2 augment has received some changes. Uh, basically, they made it so that after you or players that are also affected by shooting gallery get a certain number of kills, that you get one another one of the AoEs that flash and blind enemies. Here's the thing. This augment, good for a joke. Good for ye old memes. However, Mesa already has the best crowd control type in the game. She doesn't need a blind, and it's for the reason as follows. Do you see these enemies? I'm gonna turn on my two, which can blind enemies right now. Oh, I, I fucking killed them all. Oh, oh. Wait a minute, Mace is a murderer. Hold on. Death is way better crowd control than blind. So we don't use this augment. Is this probably a good change to this augment? Yeah, but Mesa does not need this. She would much rather use this slot uh, for considerably better mods. You, you don't really need it. So if you want to use it for jokes and probably to annoy your friends because the flash that it makes is pretty bright, you can do that. But like more realistically, don't do that at all because like you can't even put it like up here like you can with Mesa's waltz. Um, so yeah, probably avoid the muzzle flash augment. Moving on. Okay, let's talk about these Mirage Augments. Both of these, Explosive Ledger Domain and Total Eclipse, were changed. So, this one is the Augment for your two. I don't actually think I need to say anything else about that. Uh, Mirage's two sucks, and it's always sucked, even after they changed it multiple times. So, yeah, there's going to be no reason to use this ever, even if the damage and status chance go up. However, Total Eclipse has received a buff in its range in buffing other players, and... That's pretty reasonable. Total Eclipse is not a bad augment. Um, so yeah, having like this 15 meter area where your allies are buffed with like whichever side you happen to have is good. Mirage's buff is reasonably solid. Is this going to make me use Total Eclipse outside of some niche scenarios maybe? No, for sure not. Um, but it is like reasonable enough. Nothing else really needs to be said about that though. All right, as for Rhino, Rhino's piercing roar was changed and basically Roar can now be recast if you're using this in your Warframe. Here's the thing about that. Also, the debuff duration was increased, and you can did you get that with like extra duration and stuff and all that business as well. And there's a stagger effect on enemies that this hits whenever you have this equipped. The problem is that refreshing Roar is not even in the ballpark as good as refreshing Iron Skin. Iron Skin Refresh, like, changes the way Rhino can be used fundamentally. This does not. For the sake of just showing it off, though, we will do so. Grab some energy. You you can roar and do it again. So you can, you can make sure that your whole team is buffed. Uh, there can only be one buff active at a time. You can't, like, run up to somebody and buff them and then run away over to someone else where that person's not in the AoE and buff them. But it's just not worth using. Like there's, there's like the mod space on Rhino is legitimately just too tight. Uh, we're already using two augments on an ironclad build, and you can't fit a third. It's just not gonna happen. And roar, you don't need to refresh it, and the rest of the bonuses don't matter. Um, so it's technically better, and maybe someday we will want to refresh roar. But until then probably not going to be super useful so moving on okay changes to Saren's augments so we have contagion cloud contagion cloud has been changed uh so that basically the buff activates when an enemy is killed by 
your like slash procs and your toxin procs and all that stuff that you're almost certainly doing with your melee weapon if you're using your three. So this ability has been made way more consistent and also the range and the damage went up, but I don't think the damage is high enough to actually warrant using Contagion Cloud over just having access to your regenerative molt. Or if you are relying on your operator to heal you and stuff and not using regenerative molt, uh, there is a much better mod we're going to get to pretty soon you can use instead of regenerative molt that will be much more effective if you don't need this mod. So moving on, really quick note on the volt augment transistor shield. Uh, this has been made so there's no additional energy drain to you whenever the shield gets picked up by someone that's not you. And the damage conversion has been made better. Doesn't actually matter, still super useless. Uh, will probably not be used at all, so moving on. You, I mean, hey! Uh, okay. Alright, so for Zephyr's Augment, uh, as you can see, in the top right, there's no upper limit on Tailwind, and now you get a two-second window where you can touch the ground, uh, and then keep it going. So the more enemies you hit, the higher this number will go, seemingly indefinitely. So this seems like, gonna be honest, seems like a really fun gimmick thing for Zephyr to technically have infinite scaling damage, it seems. Um, so this this augment seems like a really hilarious fun time. Uh, that sure, that's this seems fun. You know what? I don't, like it's not a good. Like I'm not gonna sit here and tell you that this is good, but it seems like a fun time. So there's there's that. Uh, all right, yeah, cool. That that's a fun, neat little thing. Now let's get to like the augment changes that like actually super matter. All right, I am gonna go over this on Oberon, but it kind of goes for all of the Warframes that are under this category. So all of the infusion type augments. So Saren's one augment, Oberon's one augment, Volt's one augment, Ember's one augment, Frost's one augment. All those five, all of those now have a new ability where you can hold it to buff yourself and everyone in the AoE of it. So to show what that looks like real quick, we'll show it on Oberon. You can just hold one and then I am buffed now. I have 238% extra radiation damage. That is excellent, specifically on Oberon and Saren. And the reason it's specifically on Oberon and Saren is because of the five Warframes that have augments like this, they're the two best. But the reason it's incredible on Oberon is because it's a damage buff for Oberon, who doesn't normally have the capability to do that, so that's really good. And specifically because it is radiation damage and Oberon is already good at Eidolons, this makes it so you can legitimately, like, DPS Eidolons like considerably better, like considerably better. Uh, taking down Synovias becomes like a joke when you have 200 and some odd percent extra radiation damage on your Rubico Prime or what have you. Um, it's actually legitimately very good. Uh, it'll make it so like all your kill times are just way, way faster on most enemies in the game. All good stuff. Super good for Oberon to have this kind of augment. Um, I think it's going to be a staple in builds for him now, like just kind of period. Um, just because having that damage is just good. And with that, for pretty much all of the same reasons, it's good on Saren. But it's not quite as good on Saren, because obviously Saren is like a DPS monster. It's only good on Saren for her augment, if you're going to forego Regenerative Molt. If you don't need Regenerative Molt, I would suggest you use Venom Dose on her, because it's just a shitload of extra damage you can stack on top. Um, but if you... Need regenerative molt, I would still probably prefer to use that on her. But for Oberon in particular, this is a like game changer in terms of like Oberon doing Eidolons by himself. Um, makes a huge difference in how effective he is at doing that, and he was already quite good at it. Moving on from those five augments, also, also worth noting, I guess, it also makes all the Warframes that have these augments a little bit better at Profit Taker, because they have an additional element they can just put on all of their weapons. So that's also a slight benefit. Um, also, for the same reasons as Oberon, kind of, this gives Frost like a lot more damage potential, which is nice. Um, all, all that kind of good stuff. 
this change is one that I've been, I've literally asked for this for like a long time for like these one augments to be able to buff like the caster. So it's just a fantastic fucking change that I think makes all these Warframes better by proxy. Um, and more so than that makes me hope that more Warframes like get this type of thing for their one um, because it's just useful. Moving on though. All right, Banshee's Sonic Fracture. Okay, basically what has been done to this is more of a fix than really a change, uh, and that is that the armor reduction on this no longer needs to have the enemy be ragdolled. It just removes the armor. Like, it just does it on contact with the enemy. There's no other requirements on it. So it, it's just an armor reduction thing for Banshee. Obviously, that's fine. Jumping back to Ash, uh, we have an improvement for his smoke screen. Uh, the range of this was increased significantly, and that's all that was really done. Uh, this obviously is for making your allies invisible. There's not a place in the game right now where that's super useful and, well, not done by Octavia instead. Uh, but this is an improvement on the augment. Doesn't really need to be shown off. Pretty good. And finally, we have a note on Avara, which is her piercing navigator. So this has punch through. They they gave it, they gave it three meter, three meters punch through. That's really it. Um, this is not super useful. Like it's sure, I guess the punch through is nice. Is it gonna make more people use piercing navigator? Probably not. Um, at least I almost certainly won't be using this because it's just. You know, piercing navigator is a little slow. Like you're usually better off just like using your four as normal and killing every enemy. Um, but if you're really into navigator, then hey, you get you get punched through, and that's all right. Sure, why not do it? Uh, and that is going to do it for all of the augments. Hopefully, this video is not like hilariously long and is like pretty concise. If you guys enjoyed me going over these in the way that I have, uh, let me know in the comments. Uh, and yeah, I will see you guys tomorrow.